LSU's 53 to 48 win evens their record at five and five. It does not erase the disappointments of 2020. It does not erase the outlandish schedule that they were forced, as long as as well as the rest of college football was forced to endure. But what it did do was reveal some character. And when I think about this game, and I don't want to spend a whole lot of my time in 2021 or past that thinking much about 2020, that I can assure you. But what I'll remember about the 2020 LSU Tigers is this. Those that didn't quit, didn't quit. The ones that stuck around for the end gave it everything they had. They weren't going through the motions. Max Johnson, Kayshawn Boutte, Trey Palmer, Josh Williams, Trey Bradford, some of the most unlikely names at the beginning of this season ended up carrying the day at the end. And I wasn't kidding last week when I said, take the team picture tomorrow. Take the one from three, four months ago and discard it. Because the 2020 LSU Tigers are defined by the ones that stuck around to finish the job. Oh, it was entertaining, all right, when the Lane Kiffin team comes into the stadium, it almost always is. It doesn't mean that his team's going to win, but what it does mean is that there's going to be some grand theater, and there was. Matt Corral threw three touchdown passes in the game. He ran for 158 yards in a touchdown and turned the ball over six times. You know, there's a reason that pitchers usually don't end up with the Abby Calvin Nuke Lelouch stat line of 18 strikeouts and 18 walks is that <laughs> nobody gets to 18 walks and nobody gets to six turnovers except Matt Corral did. And the one that was forced at the end and recovered by LSU ended up saving the day. It would have been a shame for the leading reception and yardage day, or leading yardage day in the history of not just LSU, but the Southeastern Conference by freshman Kayshawn Boutte, who just drug, outran, outflanked, out everything Ole Miss to the tune of 308 yards. Now, you understand that in the last 20 years here at this school, LSU has had two Boletnikoff Award winners. And they've had half a dozen first-round draft choices at wide receiver. Pretty big names like Odell Beckham Jr. And none of them ever had a day better than the freshman Kayshawn Boutte did today. Three touchdowns, including what turned out to be the game winner in his 53-48 to slugfest. LSU's defense was not good. They allowed another 560 yards. They allowed 41 points. Uh, and then the other touchdown, of course, came on the kickoff return. But doggone it, they got a couple of stops when they absolutely positively had to have them. And for that, I watched Jaquillen Roy. I watched Jacoby Stevens. I watched Ali Gay at the end of this game and many others that were out there on that field uniforms that you could barely see the white of because they were covered in mud and sweat and probably a little bit of blood to make the final plays that would put LSU in the win column tonight. Again, this is not going to go down as one of the great seasons in LSU history. In fact, it will go by go down as a season that was more endured than was enjoyed, but... It finished well. And just like a gambler that uh, loses a couple hundred bucks on the way in the casino and wins 200 on the way out to break even, <laughs> it feels better than if you had won it early and lost it late. And so for that, this team is to be commended. It's an important offseason. It starts tomorrow. There's a lot of things that are going to happen in the coming days and weeks. But for tonight... In a rain-soaked Baton Rouge, the onesie-wearing T-Bob Bear. what say you about the LSU Tigers? Well, Hanny, uh, that, was, that was beautiful from beginning to end. And I don't know that I can as much add anything as much as I can reinforce a couple things. Um, it's a classic saying. Tonight I was told belonged to Janet Jackson. I don't know if this is true or not, Hanny, <laughs> but what have you done for me lately? 
Right, and that's that last sentiment that you were just touching on there. I get it. This season's been up. It's been down. But as always, our temperaments are determined by where the results land in relation to the expectations. And what have you done for me lately? Let's look at the last 10 days. 10 days ago, on Wednesday or Thursday before the Florida game, it felt like all was lost. Total chaos had taken root. People were leaving. The program was broken. Arik Gilbert was the straw that broke the proverbial camel's back. That was the end game. And then all of a sudden, this team, this program, Coach O, which again, if you look at his track record, who is better at dealing with broken situations than the man who built his name through interim coaching? When it was all the darkest, they came through in the biggest way with the Florida win against all odds. An insane long odds beat. What do they do next? Put together a top five recruiting class against all odds. People are supposed to leave the class. They're supposed to fall apart. And yet, there you sit with Clemson, Georgia, Alabama, Ohio State, the tops of the tops, the only teams to win a playoff game in this century. When you beat Florida, you had 26 freshmen play. Hanny, I know you're a bit of a sci-fi nerd. There's Star Trek, the original, and then there's Star Trek, the next generation. This is LSU, the next generation. Max Johnson, B.J. O'Jolari, Kayshawn Booty, Jaqueline Roy, Trey Bradford, Coy Moore, Trey Palmer, Cole Taylor, Jeray Jenkins, Dre Ward, Dwight McLaughlin. That doesn't even count the fact that TDP and John Emery are both out tonight, and much less Derek Stingley. The point is, between the recruiting... Between these young players, LSU, the next generation, looks like it's going to be a great season next year. And there's something to be said about heading into the offseason with confidence and momentum. And so when things look the darkest, this program managed to turn it around. And here you sit, and you got some juice going into this offseason, Hanny. And you got some juice going into this second signing day. And you got good players coming in. You got good players sticking around. And you got good players that are going to be here for two to three more years. Despite it all, despite the Mississippi State loss, despite the Missouri loss, despite all of this, LSU's future on this night tonight, on this Christmas, I mean, we are right here at December 19th. We are normally not playing regular season football on this night. Life is good. Things look good, despite it all. And we can take some of that hope, some of that optimism into 2021 with us. 499-9898 499-9898 is the number to call. We'd love to hear from you tonight as LSU finishes the regular season with a 53-48 win and evens their record at 5-5. Five and five. This is Eagle, 98.1 Game Day. Foundation failure is common in South Louisiana, and that's why homeowners here turn to a local company they can trust. WCK Foundation Repair. WCK is the only company that specializes in drilled piers, the ideal solution for Louisiana's unique soil conditions. WCK is locally owned and operated by a group of professionals with years of experience. Learn more about the signs of foundation failure on WCKFoundationRepair.com. Call for a free estimate. WCK Foundation Repair. Support the home team. I can't tell you how many people tried to discourage me when I said, I'm opening up a haunted house. If you love doing something, don't let anything or anyone stand in your way. How he comes up with this stuff in his head and designs it is mind-boggling. Debbie and Home Bank understand my business and understand that it's not uh, normal. They've worked with me since the beginning to help my business grow. When morning came to Louisiana, we were hopeful, not hibernating. We were mending fences, feeding neighbors, and holding our kids. When morning came to Louisiana, we were wide awake, planting seeds for next year's crops. We were stronger, ready for what's next. And together, as we build anew, Blue Cross stands ready to support you. T-Bob Bear here with breaking news. Front to Back Boat Services is the shop to upgrade your boat tech this fall. With not one, but two NMEA certified techs, who better to install your panoptic sonar, your HD displays. You want to see the fish under the water before you even cast? They have that. Trolling motors, you could control with your iPhone? They have that. 
So what are you waiting for? Get into Front to Back Boat Services right now. Upgrade your boat tech. Make your boating dreams come true. Front to Back Boat Services. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is a local bank with a straightforward philosophy. It's about doing the right thing for our customers. Participating in our community with annual local fundraisers. Offering individual attention in a modern banking atmosphere with a trusted local company. Gulf Coast Bank invested in technology with a local touch, giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime. We're building relationships through personal service as the bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. To all of our heroes working on the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic, your bravery and selflessness represent the very best of us, and we want to say thank you. I'm asking everyone around the state to join me in celebrating the heroism of our healthcare professionals on the 19th of every month at 1900 hours, that's 7 p.m. Write a note of appreciation, make plans to donate to charitable organizations, or say a prayer. To learn more, visit 19thanks.org. Thank you, and God bless. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care. It's more advanced. Eagle 98.1 Eagle 98.1 game day continues here. A quick update uh, on the SEC championship game. Alabama leads Florida 21 to 10. The game about uh, six minutes and 35 seconds to go to the break. Let's go to the phone lines, 499-9898. We have, a, we have a call from Malaysia. Really? Is this uh, Aslan? Uh, Aslan, welcome into the show. Uh, uh, hi, Charles. Hi, T-Bob. Hello, Aslan. Aslan. What's up, man? What's going on? Not too bad. It's ten eighteen here in the morning. Just wanted to get your, you know, your guys, uh, your feedback. Who do you think is going to be the next DC? Uh -huh. You know, they have lots of names being thrown around, and just want to get your, you know, your feel on it. Thanks. Thank you, Aslan. And Aslan, eight, dude, eight fifteen Aslan in the morning, is locked in post game on, for breakfast. I mean, then what? That means Aslan probably started watching the game at about four a.m. Aslan, you are a real one holding down in Malaysia. Thank you, man. And the fact that you're asking a D.C. question, like, truly proves that you are locked in <laughs> with the local sentiment. Uh, Hanny, I'll, I'll start here. I, I, I do think, look, for all of the kind of situational heroics of the LSU defense here late in the season, I think it is clear that a change needs to be made. I think the situation's pretty, I mean, it speaks for itself, right? Yeah. Um, that said, I don't. I have not I, I have not done the searching yet to find a bunch of names that I'm in love with. Do you have some names that you think could potentially be candidates? I'll give you one name that I think you should watch, and I'm not sure that this is defensive coordinator or some other uh, spot on, on the staff, but Ryan Nielsen is the defensive line coach for the Saints, and he's got a lot of college experience. He's been a defensive line coach and a recruiting coordinator. He worked at North Carolina State. Uh, he coached at Northern Illinois, where he was the uh, the recruiting coordinator there. He was the defensive line coach at Tennessee Martin. But here's the connection. He played and coached for Ed Ogeron at Southern Cal. He played in the late, uh, late 1990s until 2001. When he finished his playing career, he was a, a graduate assistant under Ed Ogeron there. So they know each other. Um, he was also at uh, Ole Miss from 2005 to 2007. If you've watched the Saints defensive line, you can't help but be impressed with what he has done. Yeah, and uh, they love him. All the D linemen speak very highly of Ryan. Nielsen. He's 42 years old. I, I hesitate to say that you know defensive coordinator 
is is where he's headed because he hasn't called defenses before. But if I was looking at a rising young star in the the coaching ranks that had ties to Ed Ogeron, Ryan Nielsen is a name that I would remember. Again, uh, as a defensive coordinator or, or some other position, I couldn't tell you. But that would be one that maybe is a little bit – uh, not as well known as the. I, I know everybody's going to say, well, you know, Will Muschamp or, or Barry Odom goes stealing away from Arkansas, and, and maybe they will. I don't know. Uh, but no must. G- keep the no name must, Ron, yeah. keep the name Ryan Nielsen in the back of your head. Um, so I I hope more than anything, Hanny. I I think like look, it, it's always interesting getting excited about individual names, right? Um, but if we look at LSU and we look at the hiring record, a high track record in the Ogeron era, maybe the names need to be discussed less and almost the philosophy behind the hires or the parameters around the hires need to be discussed more, right? Yeah. It seems like LSU, for whatever reason, a couple of times here has kind of failed to really do their due diligence in, in terms of like not knowing that the Canada and O relationship would go sideways so fast, right? I mean, was it a single interview? I think Cannon may have been offered is what the story says. Uh, and now even the Pelini hire, where everybody dove into a fully guaranteed three-year contract, and you look at how it played out. And and I, look, I'm, I'm on the outside looking in. I don't have all the information, so I can't sit here and pretend to know exactly how you fix that hiring process. But my point would be, before you fall in love with everybody, let's really nail down our parameter. Let's nail down how we're going to weed guys out. So you're not sitting there and somebody just gives a really good interview and you're like, oh, man, I love this cat. Like, let's 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 have a little more uh, discretion in in how you are deciding who eventually gets to lead this defense. One of the things I think as you look and they're going to be staff changes because there are every year. I mean, that's that's just how things go in this in this industry. They have the blessing of time. There is no rush here. Mm -hmm. There is no game to get to. 80% 80% of the signing class is in, and I think the last 20% of the signing class is not necessarily encumbered on wh- D- who, who gets who gets a... Uh, a D.C. Who, job. It's not defensively yeah. focused. The, uh, the one thing I don't know if they are encumbered by is cash, which yeah, they haven't fair. been in a while, but they might be now. They're not the only ones, but... They've had for the past, the better part of the last 20 years, almost a blank checkbook. I don't know if they have that this time. They might, but that's the thing I would, um, I would, if I were, if I were saying one thing about the staff as they go forward, I would say it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to get younger. That, yes, I, yeah. And, you know, don't, while, while Nielsen's a guy that Ed Ogeron knows, and, Believe me, LSU is not the only place when you go to hiring people, you go to hiring people you know that you're familiar with because the fear is that you end up with a Matt Canada, that you have one meeting and you go, yeah. oh, look at the resume, and then you get here and you find out that you can't stand each other. So there is a, a tendency to go back to what you know. But do, give yourself give yourself some options. We'll, sure. we'll get get a little younger. I, I mean, I think the average staff age this year is like 53 or something. That, that That's a bit too. Kevin Falk is the youngest on the staff, I believe. And he is, uh, Kevin's, what, uh, six years younger than me, so he's like 43, 44. You're missing like a meatball type. Uh, you have some, I mean, Christian Lagator is bringing in a little youth, even though he's on the main coaching squad. But, yeah, absolutely. Some of your main position coaches, I think you need to skew a bit younger. Couldn't hurt nothing. Wesley is in Baton Rouge. Wesley, welcome into the show. Uh, big time W tonight. Uh, I think all that mattered tonight was just walk out of there with a W, go into the offseason feeling good. Um, got a question. Uh, what is y'all thoughts on Derek Stingley coming out and suiting up? Uh, I, I mean, as a fan, I feel like that was like, if you can suit up in the fourth, why can't you suit up in the first to start the game? Uh, I don't did he know, get I just, in the game? Did he actually enter the game, though, Derek? I don't think he Wesley? did. Uh, that, uh, he didn't enter the game, but he came out of the locker room. Like, he, I don't think he was suited up the whole game and then came out the locker room, suited up, and he wanted to go in. There was No, he was uh, dressed. <laughs> he was dressed at the beginning of the game. He went, he went oh, out he for was? warm-ups. Yeah. So oh, okay. what, what what that is, Wesley, and I feel bad for Sting because I feel like there's a lot of narrative that's growing around him that, like, he has been trying to sit out these last couple of games. And and I'm not going to pretend to have any insight info either way, 
Let's just yeah. judge the actions outside looking in, though. What did he do last game? Was he was was he in track clothes on the sideline, or was he in full pads, like go like trying to warm up for the game? Yeah, full go. Full he was pads. in full pads. Exactly. What was he this week? Was he in a track suit, or was he in full pads trying to warm up for the game? No, I believe he was dressed. Exactly. Yeah, so what dressed. I'm saying okay. is, if you're not gonna like, if, if if you're if you are actively trying to sit out of games. Why go in full pads? Yeah. So when I hear the story about him going to the locker room, come back out with a helmet on or whatever, that to me is a is a player who ultimately as a player, you can never be trusted to judge for your own health because your motivations a lot of times are so strong and so team-oriented that you want to push your body beyond what it responsibly should do. And so to me, that's a player that's actively telling you, I want to be out there. And, and a medical staff that is erring on the side of caution on behalf of his best interest. And yeah, so yeah, but- and so this idea that Derek Singley doesn't want to play or doesn't want to be a part of this team, I I like vociferously reject that idea from what I have viewed outside looking in. I see I see nothing there. Okay, that makes me feel much better cuz the the report I got cuz I was at the game was that like all of a sudden he came out and he was dressed and ready to roll. No, uh, no. But yeah, I feel much better about that now. Actually, yeah. Thank you, Wesley. Thank appreciate you, Wesley. The, appreciate the call. If he would have wanted to opt out, he wouldn't be there. Like, at all. like the path to opt out is so easy. All he has to yeah. do is say, "I'm going to be ready for the NFL." And the crazy part is, he is so good that while sure he may hurt himself, there be all kind of people saying he shouldn't do that. Like he is one of the few human beings that could get away with something like that with a whole year of eligibility still to wait on. We'll take a break. Uh, LSU wins at 53-48, to 48, Eagle 98.1 game day. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. This isn't just another day. It's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same-day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is a local bank with a straightforward philosophy. It's about doing the right thing for our customers. Participating in our community with annual local fundraisers. Offering individual attention in a modern banking atmosphere with a trusted local company. Gulf Coast Bank invested in technology with a local touch, giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime. We're building relationships through personal service as a bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. At All-Star Toyota, you get it all. If you're in the market for an all-new Toyota vehicle, come see our friendly and knowledgeable sales team at All-Star Toyota. Located in Baton Rouge at the corner of Airline and Goodwood, we've been serving our community since 2005 by offering a large selection of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get behind the wheel of your dream car and take a test drive at All-Star Toyota today. If I built a van... It would do more than haul. It would carry my entire business. I'd make it available in dozens. Make up thousands of configurations. It would keep an eye on my fleet. 
and an eye out for danger. If I build a van, I'd make it available in diesel and gas. And I'd build it right here in South Carolina. Introducing the all-new Sprinter, starting at 33790 Built in the USA. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to run. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care. It's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is a local... Eagle 98.1. Eagle 98.1 game day continues here on the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. LSU wins it by score 53-48. to 499-9898 is the number to call. Zach is in New Orleans. Zach, welcome into the show. Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, yeah, I was just uh, to see what um, T. Bob thought about the offensive line tonight. I know it's somewhere everybody's thinking about recruiting and everything, but uh, love to hear your thoughts, T. Bob. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, thank you, Zach. What's up, man? So, um, ultimately, with the O line, I will like. Okay, I'll, I'll save my thoughts that I will really stand behind till Monday when I rewatch that film tomorrow. My surface level thoughts: uh, obviously, they did not run the ball well, which I found to be very surprising. Though they did start to break through at the end. I mean, Cavantre Bradford started to hit at the end a little bit, and they were clearing some holes. Um, but ultimately, uh, they pass protected well on the night. I mean, wh- how many Max Johnson passes was it, Musso? 51? 51 Max Johnson passes, Hanny. And do you remember him being under constant duress the entire night? No, I didn't. And what? while it hasn't been the cleanest performance and it hasn't been gashing runs and things like that, what it has been good enough for is to allow them to continue. Last week, they ran the ball 50 times. Tonight, they ran it. 43 yeah, times. That's time. 93 that's carries point. over two games. That means that you're not getting stonewalled. I mean, the, the overall sure, that's average. That's like the definition of doing just enough, 3.7 yards a carry. Yeah, the, the overall average for the two weeks is just under four yards a carry. It's, you know, it's 3.7, 3.8, and 3.7. And, you know, you measure if you feel like it, but it's a first down. <laughs> yeah, so, so I, that, you, you joke, but, like, that's exactly what I'm thinking, right? I mean, I remember being nine years old in a football meet to be like, hey, three and a half yards, four downs, we'll get a first down. Yes. And, and, and so to Handy's point, it's not great, but it is – just enough on the ground these last couple of games. Snapped the ball 80-plus uh, times yeah. last week and 94 times tonight. That's a, that's a, lot, of, that's a lot of football. So it's not perfect, but it's, it's, enough to get, it's enough to get by. It's kind of been how the O-line's been all year, and it makes sense to be 5-5. Five and five. Now, there were some confusing sort of breakdowns in terms of scheme and protection against A&M and Alabama. I felt like they were getting manipulated more than they should have been that game. Um, but but make no mistake, I mean, that is the question mark going forward, right? I mean, you had Kayshawn Booty and I literally set an SEC record for receiving yards. I mean, he put an entire team on his back and won an SEC game that you had to have 53-48 as a freshman. His emergence has, has come immediately following the Terrace Marshall departure, right? So you have seen a guy who opportunity was presented to him instead of shying away from that stage he embraced it and he has now thrived on it so the future at the skill positions on both sides of the ball remains very bright I think the defensive line the future looks very bright with Roy and everybody else the guys are bringing back and now you're going to add somebody like Mason Smith to the mix that looks great offensive line is the big question mark long term but there's maybe a little hope there right there's a storyline about oh going out to eat with the O line they got some po boys which I had a massive fried shrimp po' boy craving on Friday. I could not shake it. I've never craved anything like this. My wife said it was almost like I had pregnancy cravings. And I had that fried shrimp po' boy, and my perspective was completely changed. And so I get what a po' boy, a a good po' boy, and a Florida swamp wind can do. So maybe you get a couple of these guys back, whether that's Ingram or Shanahan or Deculus, whoever, because you're trying to get everybody back. Like, you would literally take the entire line back if you could. And then you combine that. 
with allowance of guys room for development. So you're Xavier Hill, you're Marlon Martinez, Marcus Stumerville, and you see where that goes. And I'm not saying that it's going to work out. It's just to say that there are avenues to success. And let's see how they finish out this recruiting class. So ultimately, uh, it, it's it, it's tough to rely on freshmen, except for like a phenom, maybe like a Tristan Lee, if he ends up being that. It's tough to rely on freshmen for your line. You still need numbers for the future. But for next year, it's going to be more about getting these guys to return, developing the guys that you already have there, and then maybe adding like a Tristan Lee type of talent to the mix. Matthew is in Gulf Breeze, Florida. Matthew, welcome into the show. Hey, guys. Handy's good to talk to you, man. I think the last time I talked to you on the phone was back when you worked at 1300 AM. Oh, wow. That's been a while. <laughs> yeah. it's. Um, I've always enjoyed listening to you. Thank you. And I appreciate what you do. Uh, T-Bob, the best time I've ever had listening to Sports Talk Radio was in 2009 on the Saints Super Bowl run, listening to your dad. Hell yeah, That was dude. some of, the, that that was some was of the greatest times I've ever had listening to the radio. But. Watching him wear a dress in the French Quarter is something oh. I'll never forget. <laughs> it was uh, – wait, so, Matthew, I'm kind of intrigued then. So, you and Hanny go way back. So, what brought you out back tonight? Um, I just – well, a lot of the, a lot of the sports talk, they don't – a lot of people don't take phone calls a lot. I mean, Moscona – you know, take some phone calls, but most of the sports talk radio nowadays don't take phone calls. But um, I've been meaning to call in after the games, but this is the first year we haven't been out tailgating or doing something, you know, so exactly. it gives you a little bit of time to call in now. So, but yeah, and I've always wanted to call in and talk to you guys. But my question for you is, ours are all like through the interims, you know, for like USC and LSU when, guys have really nothing to play for. The seasons are over, and usually once the coach is gone, sometimes you do get a spark of energy, you know, and they got some new life. But a lot of the times the season's foregone, the coach is gone. No matter what the score is and what's going on, Orgeron has these guys ready to play. I mean, even after we're, we're getting slaughtered, and a lot of people have turned off the TV, in the second half of the game, the Alabama game, there was still energy there. We only gave up 10 points in that second half. And they could have completely collapsed, and no one would have blamed them in the second half. I mean, the Texas A&M game, I think the defense only gave up, what, 13 points in that game? Yeah, I yeah, mean, and, and zero, zero in the second half, to your point. Yeah, so, I mean, if you keep looking at it towards the end of the year, these guys have been ready to play year in a, I mean, game in and game out. Now, obviously, there's been, there's been some riffraff there where people have dropped off and the opts it out or whatever, not to call this place riffraff. But you, you, yeah, you know what saying. there's been at, adversity but, there. That's all you say, yeah. Yes, but when the game time has come on, these guys are ready to play. And I just wanted to get y'all to, to uh, thank you, Matthew. all that. And I appreciate it. Y'all have a good night. Thank you uh, for, and for listening all this time. I can't I can't say with a straight face that he's had them, had, had them ready to play every week. They weren't ready to play against Mississippi State. They weren't ready to play against Missouri, and they certainly weren't ready to play against Auburn. But I will go back to something I said in the open, which was that those that didn't quit, didn't quit. The ones that stuck around to the end were in it 100%. They weren't going through the motions, and some of them could have. You know, Ole Miss had two of their best players opt out on Thursday. Yeah. On Thursday. It's, it's the ultimate no respect for your coach and your teammates if you do that. I'm sorry. It, it, and, and there's some things that have rubbed me the wrong way about some of the time and some of the LSU guys' departures, but none of them were that bad. If, if you get to – Ole Miss hasn't played a game in three weeks. There was plenty of time over the last three weeks where you could have said, you know what, man, I'm out. I'm going to train for the draft. I'm, I'm worried about whatever. I've reached my breaking point, whatever. You wait until 48 hours before the kickoff and you say, hey, man, peace out then I'm sorry. It it speaks to your character. And there's there's guys on this LSU team that I think it speaks to their their character when they when they did it. Okay. There's a time and a place to do things. And Ole Miss had something happen to them two days before the game that I think speaks to the level of commitment, the relationship that the players had with their coach. They didn't care. Yeah. They they did the, the the, the most selfish thing possible, if they had done it three weeks ago, two weeks ago, even at the beginning of this week, it's like, okay, well, you know, weird year. You wait until 48 hours before kickoff. I mean, you're getting on the plane in 12 hours. 
to come down here and then you opt out? I mean, it's almost like you were placed there by the opposition and had somebody call you and say, to screw him as bad as you can, wait until the last possible minute. Uh-huh. So the, the ones that stuck around here for, for LSU wanted to be out there. I mean, did it look like Kayshawn Boutte wanted to be out there tonight? Yeah. Did it look like Max Johnson wanted to be out there tonight? Did it look like Jacoby Stevens wanted to be out there tonight? Yep. Uh, did it look like Josh Williams, former walk-on, awarded a scholarship? You know, hey, raise your hand if you had Josh Williams as a leading rusher in any game in any at any point in his LSU career. I didn't have that one. He's not the most talented guy that's ever gone out there and put on a purple and gold uniform, but damn it, he, he, ran, he ran hard, did what he could. So I'll take that. Uh, I don't know what they dressed today, 50-whatever it was, but the 50, I felt like the 50-whatever it was today really wanted to be there. They were all in, and I'd have said that if they'd have lost. Yeah, I, I think that, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm right in line with you, Henny. I think the improvement that Matthew is speaking of there comes from two different factors. And first, it's what you were just speaking on. This team had to take shape. Um, I, I know I've talked about this on Off the Bench, but like it's interesting when you think about success, right? Because you think about going in 15-0 and and winning a national championship, uh, that is the ultimate goal. That is, that is quite literally what you work for for your entire life. Um, not many of us, very few of us, in fact. I don't think myself, I don't know that I ever will will ever reach something that we consider to be the ultimate goal. And because it always remains unattainable in our brains, we always believe that once we get there, that's utopia. Like, then it's all good. Once you climb that mountaintop, then everything else from there is land you have. Then you already know what to do, and it's going to be all good, and you're going to ride that mountaintop. But the thing is, once you get there, it comes with a new set of problems. Right? Like, the, the, the problems don't go away. They just change into new problems. And so success comes with its own adversity. And I don't know that LSU was fully equipped to handle that. And when you're talking about something as light, if I mean, Hanny, did last year not feel like a bit of a lightning strike in terms of where you've been to where you are now? I mean, I know there was growth. I mean, you go from 10 and 3, then you go to that. But the point is being a season that powerful, that successful, it can leave a lot in its wake. It can create a bit of a vacuum. And if you were one of the key members on that team and then you're on this team and things feel completely different, it's going to feel, I mean, maybe it feels really bad, right? And maybe you don't believe it. Maybe you do this or that. But the point is that vacuum that was created, the problems that LSU was not necessarily prepared to face, it caused some attrition. And so early on, yeah, you went through that attrition and you had to allow time for this team to take shape in its current form. And then like Andy said, once it took shape, once it crystallized a little bit, and the guys that were left, the remain, you know, the, the, the 500, Charge of the Light Brigade, uh, the 600, excuse me, those are the guys that really were committed, that wanted to be there. And you saw that echoed in their play this last couple of weeks. And then so that's one factor. And the other factor is, you, I mean, quite frankly, you just saw growth out of a very young team. I mean, this is a young team all across the board from day one. They've only gotten younger as the season has gone on, but they have improved as the season has gone on. And that's a hallmark of a young team, and that's what you want to see. That's how you start to get excited about how they project into the future. So, like, their improvement, I, I think it's mainly their youth. It's the adversity and the season taking shape, and it's where you are now. And it should, I mean, this it's its so funny. Hanny, what did you tell me last commercial break about losing? Uh, I'll tell you a lot of things. Uh, that is fair. <laughs> uh, but but as you said, you know, let's say you beat Missouri and you beat Mississippi yeah, State. And if you would have if you would have ended the season with two losses after you had started the season with two wins, this would feel different today. Exactly. Even if they had the exact same record, it would exactly. feel different. And, and and that's why all records are not built equal. And that's why what this team accomplished tonight means more than just a five and five record would indicate. Alabama scores on what will probably be the second or third to last play of the first half with six seconds to go. Uh, it is now 34-17, Alabama with the extra point to come. Charlie is in Lafayette. Charlie, welcome into the show. Hey, guys. Enjoyed listening to you. Uh, good point you've made, T-Bob, about, uh, about, you know, uh, you know, about, you know, not falling in love with the name but looking at a philosophy. Good point about character, Charlie, what you're talking about. And I think Jacoby Stevens really helped his uh, – it's helped his draft stock, you know. You, that's where character comes out. I think I think you're going to see him shoot up the charts on, uh, you know, when they have the draft. I hope he does. Uh, you know. Uh, oh, by the way, 
they uh, charge the poor boys good as well as they, uh, <laughs> as well as they fried shrimp poor boys too. So you know either one of them. But I like to have uh, no mayonnaise or tartar sauce. Give me cocktail sauce. So you know on that. But anyway, uh, the other thing uh, you know uh, I was kind of wanting to talk about is that uh, I think that. Um, you know, I mean, I, I, I you know, I, probably they're going to be moving on from Bo Pelini, but I, I always like to be fair. Had he had a full off season with a full spring practice and everything, we'll never know if this defense would have been better if they'd have had some of the same problems. I, I'm more concerned about replacing Lenahan. You know, the offense is a younger version there. Oh, man, look, yeah, I, I, Char- I, Charlie, I, I, look, it, it, I'm, I'm sorry, the, the, the Lenahan thing did not work. I, I could get behind Polini coming back before I could get behind Lenahan coming back. Oh wow, I, I, really? I, I, That's oh, interesting. Man. It's it's been a it's been an absolute complete uh, clash of you know philosophies between he and Ensminger. I'm I'm sorry. It's not that Lenahan's a terrible coach. It's just that he was a terrible fit, in my opinion. You know, it, so then we go back to hiring not, uh, practices. How did, you arri- how did you arrive with two of those hires that still feel uh, you know so well fit? Until you put them, they didn't know that Joe Brady was going to work uh, with, with Insminger the way that he did. Yeah, they they didn't know that Linehan was Brady worked, Linehan didn't. So no, that that's got to be that's got to be changed. That's, so, that's got to so, be fixed. So how do you feel about defensive coordinator then? I, I don't I don't think that they can stay with, with what they have. I mean, it's a it's a fair question. What would have happened differently if he had had an entire full off season? But the everybody else had to deal with this too, and so uh, th- I'm sorry, the, the results were too bad. And, yeah, they, they were so too that, bad. And, and that's what I want to be clear about, Hanny. Is so. So I, I said this earlier in the show, but we all know that our happiness is just determined by our expectations, right? And so don't let the new incredible low expectations of the LSU defense make you overvalue what you witnessed these last couple of games. Like they were uh, situationally good and that was enjoyable and they created turnovers, they did things like that. But look at how easy Ole Miss marched down the field when yep. they had to have it tonight. Yep. Look at the record numbers against Missouri and 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 the lack of adjustment against uh, KJ Costello and Mississippi State and Alabama because you had gone so simple at that time. Alabama was able to play you like a fiddle in terms of scheme. Like credit for doing what you could to finish the season strong, uh, but there's just already too much evidence that it did not work. And I disagree with him on Jacoby Stevens as well, and it pains me to say that because I have so much respect for the kid for coming back, but he did not have a good year. He, in my opinion, he probably would have gone higher had he gone out last year now he played hard yeah and I think he tried to show some leadership and I think a lot of things fell apart around him but to say that he had a good there wasn't a single LSU safety that had a good year not a one okay so young so, old in between not a one so is that where it almost comes around to the other side and you say okay well is this like a common denominator situation where if everybody's doing bad is is is, is the position being put in a position to succeed like I I'll be I'll be interested to see what actually happens with Stevens. Safeties were fine. Safeties were fine a year ago. They didn't play well this year. Uh, it's schematics or whatever. And I think Stevens is a linebacker at the next level anyway. He's mm. he's, he's probably more of a hybrid. But no, he didn't have a very good year in, in my opinion. None of the safeties did. And the corner, the the good corner play was sporadic at best. You saw Eli Ricks have some some flashes. Eli Ricks, uh, Eli Ricks yeah, and Sting, he's a beast. Stingley's a great player, but did he, he have as good a year as he year. was a year ago? No, he didn't. Well, uh, but, but but this all this is also the LSU thing where the number one corner always forces production to the number two corner, right? Yeah. Now, 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 granted, Stingley's main thing is that he just didn't get to play a bunch this year. On Stevens, you're right. I think he didn't play the best, but what he did do, he's kind of representative of the team as a whole in that he continued to play hard, he continued to stick it out, and he did get better. Like, like, And I guess all defense did in some ways. Even though they were still bad in the end in a lot of ways, they did improve, and, and it was improvement enough to avoid the first losing season since 99. Do I think there's a scouting department out there somewhere that will look at Jacoby Stevens and say this is a unique talent and this is a high-character guy and he can help our organization and we want to take him and he'll – We'll draft him, we'll develop him, and he'll be 
a hybrid. He'll be a linebacker. He'll be an in-the-box safety. Whatever you want to call it, yeah, I do. But I can't sit here with a straight face and tell you just because I like the kid personally that he had a good year and that he's improved his draft stop because I don't think he has. Yeah, that's fair. 499-9898 is the number to call. Zigo 98.1 Game Day. To all of our heroes working on the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic, your bravery and selflessness represent the very best of us, and we want to say thank you. I'm asking everyone around the state to join me in celebrating the heroism of our healthcare professionals on the 19th of every month at 1900 hours, that's 7 p.m. Write a note of appreciation, make plans to donate to charitable organizations, or say a prayer. To learn more, visit 19thanks.org. Thank you, and God bless. T-Bob Bear here with breaking news. Front to Back Boat Services is the shop to upgrade your boat tech this fall. With not one, but two NMEA certified techs, who better to install your panoptic sonar, your HD displays. You want to see the fish under the water before you even cast? They have that. Trolling motor, you could control with your iPhone? They have that. So what are you waiting for? Get into Front to Back Boat Services right now. Upgrade your boat tech. Make your boating dreams come true. Front to Back Boat Services. You may not know about the Four Kids Foundation, but you've probably heard of the Zurich Classic. And the Zurich Classic exists because of four kids. But it's what happens after the tournament that really counts. 100% of the proceeds are donated by the Four Kids Foundation to hundreds of local charities, totaling more than $40 million, all to help local children and families in need. Four Kids helps kids through golf because every child deserves a shot at a brighter future. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. When morning came to Louisiana, we were hopeful, not hibernating. We were mending fences, feeding neighbors, and holding our kids. When morning came to Louisiana, we were wide awake, planting seeds for next year's crops. We were stronger, ready for what's next. And together, as we build anew, Blue Cross stands ready to support you. If I built a van, it would do more than haul. It would carry my entire business. I'd make it available in dozens. Make up thousands of configurations. It would keep an eye on my fleet. And an eye out for danger. If I built a van, I'd make it available in diesel and gas. And I'd build it right here in South Carolina. Introducing the all-new Sprinter, starting at 33790 Built in the USA. Mercedes-Benz. Vans. Born to run. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Eagle 98.1.1. Eagle 98.1 game day continues. LSU wins at 53-48. to 48. If you're watching along with us on YouTube, you can see we've got some special guests here on, stat, on, uh, on the set. But uh, we do have a call from Kansas City that's been waiting. So let me take a call from Marvin. Marvin, welcome into the show. Hey, thanks for having me, guys. This is my first time ever calling in. Oh, hey, Thank you for calling. Welcome, man. I appreciate it, man. I just wanted to uh, 
get your I, I'm pretty sure everybody's been calling and congratulating the guys. I mean, they look really I like the young Tigers we got, you know, um given the fact that it's been a, a crazy 2020. I mean, they put up a good fight at least we didn't uh, end the season with a losing record, but uh you probably already already addressed it. I was wondering if um I know most people want Bogon and I'm one of them, but do you feel it's fair? Do you think that he needs a full off season to, you know, get his, you know, his players in there, a full roster. Would it be fair to do that? Or do you think that now nah, you've seen enough of what, what he's got to offer and, and, and find somebody that can put these guys in a position to, you know, at least stop the run. I mean, we couldn't do. Yeah. Mar- couldn't Marvin, stop the run. at least stop the Mar- run. Marvin, thank, you for, feel thank, you, Marvin. thank you for the call. Yeah, Here's the deal. Nobody else hit spring either. Nobody else yeah. had the the rare thing, and nobody else looked. Well, I say nobody else, but very few people looked as bad as they looked, as lost as they looked. No, you got to fix it. If if it had been really bad at the beginning, the very first season Bo Pelini was here in two thousand seven, the first two games, the defense looked like Gordy used to describe it on the post game this way: like the coordinator was speaking Spanish, and the the kids were speaking English. That so they were completely. On different wavelengths, yeah. but but you know what? They got it fixed. Yeah. And by the time you know they got into the middle of the season, things looked pretty good. This team never, never got on the same page no. defensively. They they never got to the point where they were comfortable in the secondary. They never got to. There were some individuals, but they never got to the point. And so no, I'm I'm sorry. No, Just, let, no. I mean look, let's have some standards. All yeah. right. I mean, like, let's let's have, I you know I'm I'm not I'm, trying to make them so high that they're unachievable, but I mean, you got to do better than giving up five and six hundred yards a game. I've been I married mean, since on. I was sixteen, so I don't know that I have any standards. But like, let's at least hold ourselves to some, <laughs> dude. You cannot give up like the you know record-setting amounts of yards week in and week out, and be like, yeah, this is the guy for the job. You cannot let a KJ Costello, Mike Leach air raid attack gain over 600 yards on you when the game plan to beat them is so obviously and painfully out there. And yet not only do you not game plan well, but you don't make a single adjustment during the game. Like these on balance, these things are inexcusable. And and I am not it, like it is like, yes, I'm glad that they showed improvement. But when you are paid. It's like the Spider-Man thing, Hanny, right? With great power comes great responsibility. With great money comes great responsibility. When you're paid $2.3 million a year, you cannot be record-settingly bad. That is just, I'm, it's just something you cannot be. It's not a judgment against his character. Hell, I mean, good for him. Does he get paid $6.9 million? Like, in, in total, he's going to get another $5 million trying to do anything. Be happy for him. Celebrate him. But he does not need to come back as the – he just did not live up to the standard. Football is a meritocracy. At the end of the day, you control the conversation by what you do on the field. And if you don't perform in the field, then you don't continue in that role. And that's and that's what you've got here. So if you're watching along with us uh, on YouTube, you see that we got uh, the Barstool Boys, uh, Ben Mintz and Playboy Marty, who were at the game and – Trust me, if you can't make it out uh, on on YouTube, they're wet. Okay, so they walk back. Look, to I the, changed. Uh, I, 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 I changed. I changed. He couldn't get his poncho on, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Look, I, I'm wet with uh, tears after that one for the Ole Miss side of it, yeah, man. I mean, we man. never five. You know, look, I, all I want is for Ole Miss LSU to matter and again, and just that means win one out of three or four. You know, just I, I love when LSU fans hate Ole Miss and it, like, matters to them. I hate when it's irrelevant. Yeah. And, uh, I, man, Ole Miss is going to regret that this one's going to sting. What are we on now, six? Uh, it was 2015 was the last one. So it was six. before I started my sports radio career was the last uh, Ole Miss win <laughs> wow. over LSU. And so that was why this one was so <laughs> important to the Ole Miss fan base because this is the obvious year. For every so, reason dude, you just said, okay. you were right for so, the so, so I'll say this, dude. I mean, what was it like in that stadium? Because we're watching here. We're in this, like, weird little just, like, closed room. We don't even mm-hmm. feel the rain, right? Like, I don't even really realize that the weather is outside. But one thing that did translate – is when Ole Miss went up eight, that hottie toddy was rolling loud through the television, dude. What was it like in that stadium? Okay, so the first half, it was eerie because Death Valley, like we went to Auburn, Ole Miss, and Oxford, but Ole Miss's stadium is smaller. Yeah, so it felt, you don't feel it as empty. Yeah, it felt much more like like an actual football game in Vaught Hemingway. Like, I mean, Death Valley's so big. Yeah. Like, it, 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 you felt the emptiness for sure. Yeah. But the second half, look, and I've been to, this is about the fourth Ole Miss LSU game through the years I've seen this where 
It's like LSU fans or whatever on Ole Miss, but then it gets to the fourth quarter and they're like, hell no, we don't want to lose to this team. It's like the old school vitriol (laughs) comes up and you just feel it in the stadium and I feed off it. I love it. I just love when it matters. And and like you felt it in the fourth, but then also – Man, just every fan that was there. I mean, it was pretty, considering it was COVID, it was loud in the fourth. Yes, I mean, dude. And, and it was pouring. I'm talking, it was crying it out there. miserable oh, yeah. uh, I from would not this side looking I would not have been there. So, so, so that's been the point, right? It's like, if you were there, you're a real one yes. for either side. Yes. Like, you are, your heart is in it, your passion is in it, and you felt that through the TV. Well, you felt that, and then there was a sec. So, like, I was in the LaBerge suite in the foreigner level, and luckily we were dropped there, and so we were the luckiest ever. Name dropper. But, yeah, 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 yeah. And, uh, but uh, there was a Pen section gaming. of Ole Miss, there's a section of Ole Miss fans in that end zone below us that were making all the noise, the high toddy, and man, they were. I, I was impressed. There were the few, the proud, but man, they raised hell. And you know, a lot of people come at our fan base for being a little soft sometimes. So I'm glad to see that kind of diehard energy. Did you not mm-hmm. think though, uh, because I know what was going through the mind of uh, at least the LSU fans that were my friends that were texting me and nothing nice either, that when they're <laughs> down on the LSU 28 yard line with a minute and a half to go and it's first down, that old Miss is going to score. Did you did you not feel like they were going to oh, score? Oh, I did. No, I before thought, he fumbled. Well, the biggest thing I thought about was we. This has been such an NFL discussion. A boot they should have fallen down on the five when he busted that long touchdown because oh, the yeah. game was over. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, the game's yeah. over if he falls down on the five. But you know, in the heat of the moment, he's a true freshman with setting the SEC, you know, the LSU record for three hundred yards. He had to go for those three bills, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah very, very hard. He was seeing dollar signs. Yeah. But no, when he scored, I was because I was I was worried. I was like, thankfully, he scored with the minute thirty four yes, on the clock. Left. Juice. Like, like I was looking around at people like this is actually good because LSU was going to run out the clock, and obviously with Cade York, I thought they were to score. So I was pumped about that, actually. Did, did Ole Miss even got a chance? I thought what killed Ole Miss was that awful three and out possession. Because LSU scored, yes. Ole Miss got the stop on the two point conversion, 48 46, and they come out run, run, sack yeah. with the game on the line, basically. And that was uh, what, what killed them. But the fact they were even in it with all the turnovers, four turnovers first half, which is another six in the game. Which, so, so, and that's where kind of the <laughs> I don't know if irony is the right word. Maybe it's like paradox, but the paradoxical nature of Bo Pelini comes in, right? Is that you forced a ton of turnovers tonight, six of them, but it wasn't actually a good defensive game. Yeah. Like when when can you ever say that that is the case? That's how hard it is to explain. The LSU defense tonight. Now, thankfully, whatever the six turnover ends up being, well, whatever, they were all the difference. But, like, that was to put the nail in the coffin. You had Corral cut. He just had an Arkansas game. Yeah. He's been incredible. But he's been these two games where he's had six turnovers, and that's just the side of the day. Yeah. Yeah. No, 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 no doubt about it. And, you know, I was proud of the Ole Miss effort getting back in it the way they played yeah. in the second. In the second half, they came out because they were down 34-21 at the half, and then, you know, they were up 48-40. So, I mean, that was a 27-6 run. And uh, I, I thought the effort, and it was irony too, was Ole Miss's defense actually played pretty good in the first half. They forced three punts and a field goal, and it was just still 34 at the half because the four damn turnovers. <laughs> and so that is, that is Like, when has an Ole Miss ever, fan ever watched three punts and a field exactly, goal? I couldn't believe it. Like, we started three and out beginning of the game. I was like, I hadn't seen one of these all year. We got the one last rank defense in the conference and one of the worst in college football. Yeah, that J Ward pick six broke that out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, man. And, so it was just, and Ole Miss got the special teams touchdown with the Ely bus. Ooh, I know, that was, that really was the good. weirdest play, I think. I've seen all season long. Like they were like, it, it seemed like he should have been tackled like five different times. Him, him, he was like, uh, I mean, uh, Otter's probably somewhere out there. He was like a pony breaking out the box, like breaking out the mess. He was just kind of in in the wash, kind of sorting it out, and then before you know it, he popped out touchdown. He got a good trip. Yeah, he huge trip. huge momentum play for uh, huge momentum play for Ole Miss. It was. Um, yeah, I mean, it was it, it was just it was again it's just a very memorable game. And even though it's a five and five season, Hanny, I can't get away from your point that like if you're gonna go five and five, this was the way to do it. Losing game, winning so, those games early, and losing these would have felt infinitely worse. David is in uh, New Orleans. He's been holding patiently. David, welcome into the show. Hi, how you guys doing? Today? Good, David. Um, I wanted to call and to ask a few questions about recruiting and um, also defensive coordinator. Uh, the question I have about recruiting, do you guys think that Rajon Davis uh, signs? And then uh, also, uh, with Brian Thomas and Destin Pazon, would you guys go after those uh, guys, like, you know, urgently? 
Uh, they would take Brian Thomas in a heartbeat uh, for sure. I think Rajon Davis is going to sign with it with USC probably. Um, I think he's more likely to stay on the West Coast. If he was going to sign here, I think he would have signed in the early period. Now, it doesn't mean they're going to quit recruiting him. If you're asking me today, two months out, I think he's going to sign on the West Coast probably at SC. Yeah, and the other question is about defensive coordinator. Um, I don't think Coach O has the like the time to maybe get a young rising defensive coordinator. I think he may have to get someone that's proven because of how bad this year has gone. You know what I mean? And so I think he may be a Chris Rashad maybe, you know? Well, th- that was a name that came up the last time, uh, you know, when, when he was with Dallas. I, I don't necessarily agree with you that you can't get a young coach that can come in and make an immediate impact. Uh, Joe Brady last year made an immediate impact. Nobody knew who he was. That's why it's tough when you get into these discussions about who's going to replace who. There's a lot of names that you don't know. For instance, I would would imagine that very few people knew the name Ryan Nielsen when when I brought it up earlier. And I'm not saying he's going to be a defensive coordinator, but I'm saying it's a name to watch because he's done a great job with the Saints. He's got college experience. He's been a good recruiter. In fact, he's been a recruiting coordinator at more than one stop. He's a young guy, and obviously Ogeron's ties to the Saints are are pretty significant, and this guy played and coached for him at SC and at Ole Miss. But I don't know if he's going to be on the next staff. I I, I didn't think it was going to be Polini the last time. Uh, I certainly didn't think it was going to be Matt Canada the time before that, and I didn't know who the hell Joe Brady was 18 months ago. So I... I could throw you some more names, but names would be all they were. I, Nielsen's a guy that I know he's got some ties to and is having a very good run. When you look at what he's done to develop a guy like a Trey Hendrickson or a David yeah. Onyemata, the, the, the Saints defensive line has got some juice to it, and this guy's got some ties to O. Oh, but I don't know that that means anything. Yeah, I mean, look, when I, when I think about a coaching hire, I kind of go back to what I said about earlier, the parameters are what I'm really trying to examine, and and, and it's kind of a milk toast answer because it involves, you, look, you can't be married to anything. You can't say I don't want any old guys, you don't want any young guys, right? You have to be willing to look at all. Now, I would maybe prioritize, like, really vetting a lot of up-and-coming prospects that you're into, but ultimately, I think that's what it comes down to is don't, fall in love in an interview and then dive right in. You've seen that gone awry for LSU a few times now. Like continue to do the due diligence, continue to vet, even maybe to an degree where you feel like it's over the top and feel as solid as you can when, uh, when making that decision. You know, the thing is for most people, a good hire is a name that, you know, it's just like in a draft. What's a good draft. You drafted people. We knew. Well, if you you drafted somebody (laughs) from uh, Hofstra, well, that's Who's not Alvin a, Kamara? Uh, yeah, well, not the Alvin Kamara. Backup Tennessee thinking, running back? I'm thinking more like Marcus Colston. Yeah, it's there like, you go. You took, a, you took a guy out of Hofstra? They're, they're shutting the program down. What the, what, what the hell? No, no, no. He's the, the leading receiver in the history of the, of the franchise. And nobody, nobody knew who Joe Brady was two years yeah. ago. Uh, it's, and he ended up being the best hire that Ed's had so far. Jay is in Laplace. Jay, welcome into the show. Hey, Charlie. It's been a while, buddy. Hey, Jay. Thanks for uh, Thanks for calling tonight. Uh, hey, T. Bob, how you doing? Jay, what's happening, man? Um, I got a question about formations. I know y'all don't have stats on this, but going back to last year and to an extent this year, what do you think is the most productive formation? The five wides, the bunch formation, well, go, go or the max protection? Uh so I don't know. Just off the top of your okay, head. well, okay, okay. So I think you're asking a couple of things there. If we're talking about, if you're saying, okay, so I personnel grouping is one thing. Eleven personnel has been their best grouping: three receivers, one tight end, and one running back for a couple of years now. Okay. The other thing you're talking about, if you're talking protection schemes, I do agree with you. Keeping less people in protection has been better for LSU than keeping more in. Okay. You asked me the best the best formation last year. Might have been considered eleven personnel, but the tight end was flexed out so much. Well, that yeah, is no, it is. Yeah. absolutely no, no. Like I'm, I'm not. So saying, it looks like a four by one. Yes, really. the tight end could line up anywhere he wants, but just that personnel grouping has been really where their bread and butter has been formed, and it still is. I mean, you saw Cole Taylor in. I like that all better. The time I tonight. like that better than empty. Is that, and I liked it better I last year, and and I liked it way better this year. I will say yeah. this: I just agree with, uh, especially if you trust your quarterbacks and they are coached well. 
I agree with the base concept of giving them options over more protection, right? When you hold guys into protection, you take down the options the quarterback has to get rid of the ball. And if anybody messes up their pass pro, then you're getting double hit on wasted resources. Not to mention the fact that if they go max protect one more time, Matt Flynn's going to come in here and want to fight people. Well, because Matt gets it. Because <laughs> Matt gets it. I mean, that's what, that's no, what we're it, talking it, about. The guy's really good, right? That's what back in 2017, that's what Jerry sold. I mean, the, the whole offense was terrible because of that. They were trying to hold seven men in, and they were still giving up pressure. So it's like, what are you doing? It's a, it's a self-defeating tactic. We'll take a break here. LSU wins it 53 to 48. Eagle 98.1 game day. During times of trouble, hope keeps us calm and courage keeps us strong. Here in Louisiana, we know this better than most. After all, we faced hardship, but hurricanes and floods never washed away what makes us strong. It's our culture, the spirit of resilience that says rise and rise up again. We'll make it through the tough times. We always do. And Blue Cross will always be here to support you. To all of our heroes working on the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic, your bravery and selflessness represent the very best of us, and we want to say thank you. I'm asking everyone around the state to join me in celebrating the heroism of our healthcare professionals on the 19th of every month at 1900 hours, that's 7 p.m., Write a note of appreciation, make plans to donate to charitable organizations, or say a prayer. To learn more, visit 19thanks.org. Thank you, and God bless. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is a local bank with a straightforward philosophy. It's about doing the right thing for our customers. Participating in our community with annual local fundraisers. Offering individual attention in a modern banking atmosphere with a trusted local company. Gulf Coast Bank, invested in technology with a local touch, giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime. We're building relationships through personal service as the bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust, the bank that cares about you. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating health care at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. T-Bob Bear here with breaking news. Front to Back Boat Services is the shop to upgrade your boat tech this fall. With not one, but two NMEA certified techs, who better to install your panoptic sonar, your HD displays. You want to see the fish under the water before you even cast? They have that. Trolling motor, you could control with your iPhone? They have that. So what are you waiting for? Get into Front to Back Boat Services right now. Upgrade your boat tech. Make your boating dreams come true. Front to Back Boat Services. You may not know about the Four Kids Foundation, but you've probably heard of the Zurich Classic. And the Zurich Classic exists because of four kids. But it's what happens after the tournament that really counts. 100% of the proceeds are donated by the Four Kids Foundation to hundreds of local charities, totaling more than $40 million, all to help local children and families in need. Four Kids helps kids through golf because every child deserves a shot at a brighter future. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Eagle 98.1. Florida scores to open the second half, a touchdown. 
35 to 24, about a minute and a half in, Alabama leads into the third quarter. Back to the phone lines, uh, we go to Robbie in Baton Rouge. Robbie, welcome into the show. Hey, guys. I got a statement and a question. First of all, Mincy, I appreciate uh, your picks. I got Oklahoma and teasing the over in the Bama game. I think both are looking good. You didn't so. call me. <laughs> there were, there were, I appreciate you looking at the positive because there were a couple of negatives tossed yeah, in there yeah, as well. Yeah, so I like, today, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, like, I like a guy whose glass half full because everybody else in gambling just points out the losses. So I like you already. Uh, I hate to pile on Pelini, uh, but man, it's uh, man when the defense is this bad, it, it's it's you know one of three things: it's technique, it's scheme, or the players. I, I think we got some horses out there. I don't think it's the players. I just I think the scheme and the technique is just is just not good and uh that that's kind of my statement uh yeah. struggle with both and then my question is you know Kevin Falk uh got two really good running backs um he he closed on two good running backs in this recruiting cycle and you know if Pelini would have started the year pretty bad and kind of trended in the right direction and closed on some big recruits, then, you know, I might be able to look past the bad numbers. But exactly who did Pelini close on by himself? Uh, hang up and listen and go Tigers. Thank you, Robbie. Um, okay, Hanny, I'll let you handle the recruiting question because I'm not entirely sure on who Pelini would Pelini's have. Pelini's never been looked on. at as a particularly strong recruiter. I, I'm not saying that he's been a liability, but he's never been looked at as, oh, that guy, you know, he's going to go out and close or whatever. So, I uh, no, I don't, I don't think that's a – what do I don't you bring think that's to the a party guy. Well, I mean, why do we invite you? Yeah. Um, <laughs> as far as Pelini's job status, it's almost like we should stop talking about it because I, it's, I mean, I'll just go back to the U S constitution, right? Like we hold these truths to be self-evident. The evidence speaks for itself. Uh, enjoy all the positives. We don't even need to harp on the negatives because that, that, I mean, that it speaks for itself. Stefan in Crowley is next. Stefan, welcome to the show. Hi, guys, and good night to y'all. Uh, don't worry, no poetry tonight. Hey, Stephen, I still appreciate your poems, dude. Thank you for sending them to me. Been kind of a crazy year. I'm a medical professional, and I know this year's been challenging for everybody, but it's been ticking up for some extra call tonight. So it kind of took me out of my creative process. But I'll tell you this, like tonight, and I'll say the last two games have been especially inspirational to me, not just because we won them, which is great, like that's celebrated as a Tiger fan, but I thought, which I'll said about the ones who stayed around. All this year, we've talked about this team lacked good leadership. I think we found our leaders in these last few games. I think the future looks bright going ahead because you found some guys that were willing to gut it out. They might not be the five-star recruits. They went out there and led on, left it on the line. And then you kind of extrapolate to all of this. You know, if we can get a turnaround after a season like this, I think the not everything's going to be so rough, you know. Maybe it's going to move on. But I'm just mostly encouraged by our leadership and what I saw out there. Thank you, Stefan. I appreciate it. I, I respect what those kids did the, the last two weeks. Oh, yeah. They've been there since June. This is the, 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 this, the longest season ever, even though they played five less games than they played last year. And this season feel like it lasted a lot longer than last year's yeah i mean <laughs> because yes. it was it was yeah. more of the the drudgery without the reward of the games it was you're locked in you know a month here two weeks there you know good morning come over here so i can shove this q-tip up your nose i mean mm-hmm. every day no party no yeah, release. This, yeah. Uh, that's right. what you go to yeah. college for everybody right. else is gone. <laughs> right. everybody exactly, else is dude. gone this is this is no fun yeah. so i respect the kids that stuck it out and I, yeah. I think he's right. I think that they'll be they'll be better players for it. I think they'll be better people for it on the other side. So I before the Alabama game, you know, I I I fell in love with that Charge of Light Brigade poem about like, you know, got guys that are doing things that they know to be fruitless, but they have to do it because they are kind of otter bound or duty bound to do so. And and, and I was someone who was very much like, I don't need to see the Alabama game. Like I, that does nothing for me. From a fan perspective, that holds true. That did nothing for me, but it did do something for this team. I think everybody can appreciate this. There's value in getting your ass kicked, right? Like everybody, oh, yeah, sure. everybody's been through that before. Like 
it's it's you know never waste a good failure whatever the cliches go on and That's on true. you can learn iron sharpens what, iron exactly yeah. And, yeah. and you can learn lessons by by being exposed you can learn less by getting your ass kicked so for those young players that Alabama game was a direct statement okay you think you might be bad you rolled into a championship program y'all gonna roll the ball win a championship not so fast this is how far you have to go and it was a wide gap and it still is but. But that taught them a lesson, and they took those learnings forward with them into the next week, and they get that Florida, and they get a little more juice. They take those learnings of this week. They get an Ole Miss win. And now when they take the field next season, they are going to feel supremely confident because they've been in it. They've been in the trenches. They've been in the dogfights. They've taken They've gotten their ass kicked, and they came out the other side, and were better for that. And anybody who's been through that in their life knows that that makes you better. And so, yeah, man, look, I think – I mean uh, – Marty, you're an LSU fan. How do you feel about LSU right now at 5-5 five and five at this season's end? I just say, I mean, the weirdest thing about this season is how different this team looks right now than it did, say, in August or what we thought this team was going to be. Yep. I feel good moving forward, and I've been saying it. Like, I, I think I tweeted it out after after last week. Like, if we could, if we go and beat Ole Miss and 5-5 five and five in an SEC-only schedule with – all these opt outs, all like everything going wrong. If that's rock bottom, I'm pretty okay with that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. like, a, 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 that a, a, is a charmed lifestyle. I mean, Tim, I mean, like from the old Miss perspective, yeah. like that is a charmed lifestyle. Yeah, well, we, old Miss just finished four and five. It's like happy, you know. This was like the most fun <laughs> season we've had in years, you know. Like, I mean, yeah, Mens like, Men's is coming here like off a loss, like with the worst record. <laughs> no, I mean, yeah. look, but more like, happy than we are. But at least we're relevant again. No, I get it. I get it. We were like, we were completely. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I have a quick. I like the poem thing. Uh, Louisiana rain is soaking through my shoes. I'll never be the same when I leave Baton Rouge. Oh, Tom Petty. Oh, I was. I, I referenced that today oh, after the game. Mincy, Tom Mincy. Petty song. Yeah, it's great. It's perfect for today. Brent perfect. is in uh, Baton Rouge. Brent, welcome into the show. Hey, Mincy. What's, What's up, up, man? How are you? Good, man. Hey, I was just wondering from an outsider's perspective, as far as an Ole Miss fan, what do you think about this LSU team next year? Thank you. I think they're going to get it right because I think a lot of these freshmen and young guys had a chance to step in. And I mean, I, man, well, you got a stud number one. Oh, oh God, Kayshawn, God bless, man. And I just have a, I have the faith that they're going to get it right. I, they just this year was so weird. And LSU, and I like what T Bob said too. Talk about a team that could have packed it in and quit at three and five. Yes, and with all yes, the next, I've yes. never seen anything like that pre Florida week. Everybody thought the the world was burning <laughs> in the program. I mean, it was just the negativity coming out of here. It was insane. And for them to respond, winning in the swamp. People were like, I mean, I think Billy Napier would be a good head coach. No, like, it, was, I mean, yeah, <laughs> it was insane. Y'all just won the, y'all the best season in college football history a year ago. And uh, I think it says a lot about those kids, though, with all the COVID stuff, everything you said. To be 3-5, and five, I mean, I thought y'all were facing 3-7 and seven in yes, the face. Yes, I did, yeah. too. And to end I up 5-5 five and five and win in the swamp and, be, you know, Ole Miss isn't great by any means, but it's still, you know, good. Given you know, the context, yeah. this matter. And, and, yeah. and look, and, and let's be clear. Right? I, I know on clear. our side, we'd have killed to win that game today. And, and, and what's, <laughs> fascinating, what's fascinating about that is the results matter, and the results will hold momentum going into the future for LSU. And you won't, anytime you're successful in life, I, I think it always pays dividends to act yourself. Like, okay, like, absolutely be pleased with yourself. You did it, you earned this thing or whatever. But, like, it's my old man always drilled this into my head. Sometimes it is better to be lucky than good. And, and that's not to take away from your accomplishments. All that means is that sometimes luck will present you with opportunities and it's up to you to make the most of them. And when you think about Kyle Pitts being out, where did Florida struggle in the red zone? Where is Pitts an absolute monster in the red zone? Then you get this old Miss game with this incredible coordinator where your defense is terrible, but all of a sudden no Elijah Moore, no Yaboa, like like 66% of that. And they still scored 48. Yeah. Right. Like they win that game if those guys play. But, but so it's not to take away from LSU. It's just to reinforce how just be thankful for this and what you witness because I think it carries forward and, and, and credit to these guys for taking, you know, for making the most of what luck presented to them. Let me, I want to read something. This is a question that we got out of, uh, I think it was off of YouTube. It says, would this have been an eight and four season if no, COVID occurs. I just want to. I'm. I'm going to answer that by reading you a couple things here. I'm going to read you the 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 starting lineup that LSU put out there for the Mississippi State game. All right, 
Um, Miles Brennan was at quarterback. He didn't play tonight. Terrace Marshall was at wide receiver. He didn't play tonight. Racy McMath was at wide receiver. He didn't play tonight. Eric Gilbert was at tight end. He didn't play tonight. Chasen Hines was at right guard. He didn't play tonight. Chris Curry was at running back. He barely played tonight. Over on the defensive side of the football, Apu Aika was there. He didn't. He didn't play tonight. All of that is after uh, Derek Stingley would have been in that lineup uh, had it not been for a last minute. Yeah. He didn't play yeah, tonight. Yeah, completely about that. Uh, and that's this is all. And the Mississippi State game happened two and a half months after the team re-reported for COVID. And I, I don't think I'm making an outlandish prediction when I say Jamar Chase would have started that game and he wasn't there tonight. <laughs> and Kerry Vincent would have started that game and he wasn't there yeah, tonight. And Tyler yeah. Shelvin would yeah. have started that game and he wasn't there yeah, tonight. Yeah. And Damone Clark started that game and his season other than last week, really went to pieces. No, I don't think they would have finished eight and four if you had put the the team that was supposed <laughs> no. to be on the field uh, I out mean, there tonight. Let's be clear. I don't think – maybe they have a little, not a lot of new faces, so I'm wrong in this, but the COVID, just for me personally, the COVID thing does nothing for me. It, I, I guess I just go back to the same base logic as – like whatever, what your coach tells you when you're a young kid, oh, you're hot. Well, it's hot for them too, right? Yeah. Like, like yeah. you dealt with COVID. Oh, well, they did too. So, like, I I don't buy that. That's some um, great hindrance to LSU while you had other new coaching staffs and other teams thrive or or do well. Or Would get, you or cop improve. to the fact that LSU didn't handle COVID very well? I mean, I'm not talking about the the medical response to it. I'm talking about holding the team. To, together at uh, from a from a number yes, standpoint, but I wonder if it would have almost been inevitable. Um, Maybe even no. Well, I don't know about from a number standpoint. I give them yes. I give them credit for the ones that stuck around. No, no, you're right. You're hard, right. Look, you know, look, but uh, as far as opt outs, like yes, that is created by COVID. But what I'm talking about more this idea that and like coming co- off a championship, yeah, like well, yeah, winners yeah, tilt. Guys had accomplished winners tilt. a little bit of like yeah, yeah, so, there was well, less to accomplish. Winners tilt. Yeah. It's that, called that, yeah, that, 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 It's called winners tilt. I've never heard that phrase. That is what I've been trying to explain all night long. That is the vortex left behind by winning. It's yes. And and once you feel that, anything short of that feels so little that yes. you have no motivation. And so, like, yeah, it's like they were feeling high and mighty, dude. They were done. Where was the motivation to put in the the, the, the super hardcore work at, like, 10 a.m. Exactly. on a Saturday in the summer when you got the 15-0 and in the natty in you? So this mm-hmm. season becomes yep. that re-motivation yep. point where you had to lose. You were on winner's tilt. You had to get humbled, and now you're trying to come back. We'll take a break. Uh, This is Eagle, 98.1 Game Day. Foundation failure is common in South Louisiana, and that's why homeowners here turn to a local company they can trust, WCK Foundation Repair. WCK is the only company that specializes in drilled piers, the ideal solution for Louisiana's unique soil conditions. WCK is locally owned and operated by a group of professionals with years of experience. Learn more about the signs of foundation failure on WCKFoundationRepair.com. Call for a free estimate. WCK Foundation Repair. Support the home team. I can't tell you how many people tried to discourage me when I said, I'm opening up a haunted house. If you love doing something, don't let anything or anyone stand in your way. How he comes up with this stuff in his head and designs it is mind boggling. Debbie and Home Bank understand my business and understand that it's not uh, normal. They've worked with me since the beginning to help my business grow. This isn't just another day, it's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. 
Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is a local bank with a straightforward philosophy. It's about doing the right thing for our customers. Participating in our community with annual local fundraisers. Offering individual attention in a modern banking atmosphere with a trusted local company. Gulf Coast Bank invested in technology with a local touch, giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime. We're building relationships through personal service as the bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust, the bank that cares about you. At All-Star Toyota, you get it all. If you're in the market for an all-new Toyota vehicle, come see our friendly and knowledgeable sales team at All-Star Toyota. Located in Baton Rouge at the corner of Airline and Goodwood, we've been serving our community since 2005 by offering a large selection of new Toyota cars, trucks, and SUVs. Get behind the wheel of your dream car and take a test drive at All-Star Toyota today. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance. With the latest in office technology, from desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. When morning came to Louisiana, we were hopeful, not hibernating. We were mending fences, feeding neighbors, and holding our kids. When morning came to Louisiana, we were wide awake, planting seeds for next year's crops. We were stronger, ready for what's next. And together, as we build anew, Blue Cross stands ready to support you. Eagle 98.1 Game Day Stat Check. Then we look at the yardstick tonight in LSU's 53 48 win. 29 first downs for LSU, 25 for Ole Miss. Rushing yards 307 on the ground for Ole Miss, 158 for LSU. Passing yards 435 for LSU, 251 for Ole Miss. Total offense LSU ran 94 plays tonight for 593 yards, 75 for Ole Miss for 558. Third down conversions, Tigers 5 of 18, Rebels 5 of 12. Penalties, only 4 for the Tigers, 39 yards, 6 for the Rebels, 51 yards. Time of possession, 33-15 for the Tigers and 26-45 for Ole Miss. Individually, uh, Matt Corral at rushed for 158 Jeez. yards what was his career high in rushing yards before this? Uh, I mean, he moves a little bit. I would guess 70 or 80. Yeah. I mean, he can move a little bit. Never 100 yards. No, game, right? no, 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 no. Buck 58 for him. Henry Parrish added another 82 and two touchdowns on the ground. For LSU, Josh Williams, 12 carries for 55 yards tonight. Trey Bradford, 9 for 53. And Max Johnson, 14 for 48. Corral, 15 of 27, 251 yards, three touchdowns, five interceptions. Mm. He was sacked twice. Max Johnson, 27 of 51, 435 yards, three touchdowns, one interception. It was in the end zone. He was sacked one time. Receiving Kayshawn Boutte, 14 carry, uh, 14 oh, no, catches. No, no, let, me the, let me get the lotion out, Hanny. Okay. Uh, 308 <laughs> yards. It is an SEC record for receiving yards mm. and three touchdowns, including the game winner. Coy Moore, six catches for 63 yards. Braylon Sanders led Ole Miss with four catches for 70 yards and two touchdowns. And Henry Parrish added four catches for 27 yards. Von Rosenberg, five punts, 42.2 yard average, two inside the 20. Mac Brown, three punts, 47.3 yard average, none inside the 20. And defensively, uh, the leaders tonight for uh, Ole Miss, uh, Lakia Henry with 12 uh, total tackles, four solos, and eight assists. Uh, Jacquez Jones with 11, two solos, and nine assists. He also had two quarterback hurries. For LSU, Micah Baskerville, five solos, six assists, 11 total tackles, including two for loss. Jabril Cox, six, uh, three solos, four assists, one tackle for loss, and one interception for 14 yards. 
Jay Ward had two interceptions huh. tonight. Allie Gay had an interception. Todd Harris had an interception. And LSU with uh, two sacks but eight total tackles for loss tonight on defense. And that is your stat check. We are back with our final scoreboard. Eagle 98.1 game day. Service Mastery Elite create clean, disinfected work environments. As a local business, we take pride in serving the New Orleans and Baton Rouge areas. Our cleaning protocols follow CDC and OSHA standards for healthcare settings, offices, senior living, restaurants, and industrial plants. Contact Service Mastery Elite to get your operation ready for reopening with germ disinfection cleaning. Service Mastery Elite, the trusted choice in professional cleaning since 1996. This is a house call. This is a follow-up appointment. This is a diabetes checkup. This isn't just more convenient care, it's more advanced care. This is innovating healthcare at Louisiana's number one hospital, Auctioner. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is a local bank with a straightforward philosophy. It's about doing the right thing for our customers. Participating in our community with annual local fundraisers. Offering individual attention in a modern banking atmosphere with a trusted local company. Gulf Coast Bank invested in technology with a local touch, giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime. We're building relationships through personal service as the bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust, the bank that cares about you. To all of our heroes working on the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic, your bravery and selflessness represent the very best of us, and we want to say thank you. I'm asking everyone around the state to join me in celebrating the heroism of our healthcare professionals on the 19th of every month at 1900 hours, that's 7 p.m. Write a note of appreciation, make plans to donate to charitable organizations, or say a prayer. To learn more, visit 19thanks.org. Thank you, and God bless. During times of trouble, hope keeps us calm and courage keeps us strong. Here in Louisiana, we know this better than most. After all, we faced hardship, but hurricanes and floods never washed away what makes us strong. It's our culture, the spirit of resilience that says rise and rise up again. We'll make it through the tough times, we always do. And Blue Cross will always be here to support you. Foundation failure is common in South Louisiana, and that's why homeowners here turn to a local company they can trust, WCK Foundation Repair. WCK is the only company that specializes in drilled piers, the ideal solution for Louisiana's unique soil conditions. WCK is locally owned and operated by a group of professionals with years of experience. Learn more about the signs of foundation failure on WCKFoundationRepair.com. Call for a free estimate. WCK Foundation Repair, support the home team. T-Bob Bear here with breaking news. Front to Back Boat Services is the shop to upgrade your boat tech this fall. With not one, but two NMEA certified techs, who better to install your panoptic sonar, your HD displays? You want to see the fish under the water before you even cast? They have that. Trolling motor, you could control with your iPhone? They have that. So what are you waiting for? Get into Front to Back Boat Services right now. Upgrade your boat tech. Make your boating dreams come true. Front to Back Boat Services. Eagle 98.1. The First South Farm Credit College Football Scoreboard. First South Farm Credit. Financing farms and land since 1916. All right, we start in the Mercedes-Benz Dome in Atlanta. Alabama 35, Florida 24. About five minutes to go in the third quarter here. Gators hanging around. They've got the football uh, at their own 33-yard line with a first down. And Mac Jones has thrown four touchdown passes. Najee Harris has well, over 100 a yards. Uh, but, uh, again, the Gators just hanging around there. It's it's an 11-point game here 
uh, getting into the latter stages uh, four minutes ago, actually, in the third quarter. The uh, American Championship game, Cincinnati has just scored to go ahead 23-17, to 17, extra point to come about halfway through the third quarter in that one. Game in overtime right now, UCLA leads Stanford 41-34. Cardinal have the ball right now, need a touchdown to tie to send it to double overtime. Arizona State and Oregon State just getting started right now. The game is in Corvallis. The earlier finals from today, number three Clemson wins the ACC 34-10 over number two Notre Dame. Trevor Lawrence throws for 322 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Travis Etienne had 124 on the ground and a touchdown. Clemson uh, gets into the playoff, uh, certainly. Notre Dame, we think, guys. Uh, th- I mean, th- th- I, I, they I, in or, said, or what? I thought that, the, well, the margin made me a little worried, but I've always thought that Notre Dame would get in with a loss. Mint. I think they're in. I, I think they're in. The North Carolina win looks good. And, yeah. uh, well, well, like, where's A&M's win outside of Florida, which may end up being a three-loss team by the okay. end of the night? Okay. Florida lost to the 2020 in, uh, LSU Tigers, so I don't know. I don't know, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. Now, if Florida were to come back and win this game, this, no, this then throws, A&M gets that, in. That, well, that well, no, then it's total chaos. No, then maybe Florida gets in. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, a two-loss team that's got a – the best win would then be a win over Alabama – and, and the Gators are down. They are inside the 30-yard line of the Tide. We're three and a half minutes yeah. to go. They're not supposed to really be in this game this close. So we'll see. Don't yeah. get my hopes up, yeah. Annie. Dan Mullen <laughs> guarantee. Let's see if it comes true. Ohio State, uh, the number four team in the country, beats number 14 Northwestern for the Big Ten title, yeah. 22 to 10. Didn't look good, though. Trey Sermon ran for a Big Ten record 331 yards and two touchdowns. Look, Northwestern led this game at halftime. They led this game deep into the third quarter. It wasn't the prettiest thing for Ohio State, but they win it, and they will probably get in, much to the consternation of many. Okay, so that was going to be my question. Do you think Ohio State damaged themselves today, or did when they pulled it out in the end, was that all that mattered? Now, here's the thing. Are you asking me, do I think they will get in, or, sh- or do I think they should get in? Will. Yes. Okay. Should? No. No, I'm with you completely. (laughs) Number five, Texas A&M beat Tennessee 34-13. to Kellen Mond threw for 281 and a touchdown. Isaiah Spiller had 89 yards and a score. Number 10, Oklahoma wins the Big 12 title with a 27-21 win over number six, Ohio State, getting revenge for an earlier loss this season. Other games, uh, San Jose State, they win the Mountain West Championship game with a 34-20 to win over Boise State. Hey, Spartans are undefeated. You know? Nick Star- How about the Nick Starkle? Nick Starkle. Oh, Nick, he's their quarterback. Wait, wait, 450, San Jose State. 453 oh, yards and three touchdowns. Yeah, Starks, today, Nick yeah. Starkle goes a and to Arkansas to San Jose State. His last year he ends, uh, goes undefeated and wins the Mount West. What a story. <laughs> wow, totally yeah, like, yeah, get a good story, man. Yeah, let's go Starkle, dude. Yeah. Hell yeah. Utah beat Washington State 45-28. to Army beat Air Force 10-7. to Mississippi uh, State beat Missouri 51 51- to 32. I had a friend Wait, of mine. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, Will Rogers threw three touchdown passes in this game. Mincy, uh, a friend of mine texted me about half an hour before this game, and he said, does Missouri have a lot of people out for COVID? And I said, I don't know. He said, well, because Mississippi State's favored, and, and why? And I sent him the score back in like two minutes ago in the fourth quarter. I'm like, because Vegas knows. Why is Mississippi State we, favored we, over we anybody? Act, yeah, right? we talked about that at pregame, and I was wondering that same thing. I mean, what do you think they saw? Like, what? They I mean, saw I a 19 Basel point win. Not I guess they saw that Missouri 50 to 48 win over Arkansas. That got real wild a couple weeks ago when Arkansas went up and down the field on them. I don't know. Wisconsin beat Minnesota 20 to 17 in overtime, and it was Penn State over Illinois 56 to 21. So the Nittany Lions lost their first five, won their last four. Oh, hey, Penn State, welcome to the club. Feels good, baby. A little late juice. <laughs> it was it was a much better <laughs> end than it was uh, a beginning, and that is your college football scoreboard. Uh, Florida with the ball. Here's Kyle Trask on a run. He got, I think he's he got gonna, the third gonna, and four. First wow. and goal. Did, did First and goal, Florida did y'all on about the nine. There were two NFL games today. Did y'all even realize no, this happened? No, I've been in the Bills blasted yeah. Denver and Green Bay's beating Carolina well, right Bills now. The Bills blasted fourth. Denver. Yeah. Wait, okay. Yeah. Great. That makes 48, sense. 48 to yeah, nineteen. I'll the stay. Bills he caught up a game on me. I had Denver. Oh, oh. let's go, Bills! Well, now, now, okay, so hang on. Mincy brings <laughs> up a good point because we should be paying at least some attention to this. Buffalo beat Denver forty-eight to nineteen. Who cares? But wow. Green Bay is leading Carolina, but only twenty-one to ten. And Carolina's mm-hmm. got the ball inside the Green Bay 20 with Come 12 on. and a half minutes to go. 
that would help. Come on, Panthers. Uh, that that would help Saints fans. Yes. Uh, if that Joe Brady, to... come through for Louisiana once more. Teddy B. Yes. Please, little dude. Help. Please, little... dude. We need you. Little help. Little help. Little help. Hey, something I just thought of. If Florida comes back and wins this game, uh, is the Kyle Trask uh, Heisman candidacy back on? I think if Florida comes back and win this, yeah, everything's back on the table. Let me see what the numbers are. Mac Jones has thrown for 400. Uh, I'm sorry, 353 yards, four touchdowns, and a pick. Trask is thrown for 291, two touchdowns, and no interceptions. So, if Florida were to win it, Florida Touchdown. gets in. That's good. That's not Kadarius Tony. That's uh, that's. Um, I don't know who that is. Oh, 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 oh we uh, got a ball game. Whoever it boy. is, uh, that's a, that's a score. This is what I love about Alabama. Is Alabama is not used to being in dog fights. So yeah. nobody gets tighter buttholes than Alabama fans <laughs> when they're true. in a dogfight. You're right. They it's get like the, so the Russian, stressed, Russian, Russian dude. hockey team. Dude, yeah. they get so stressed. They don't know what to hey, do. T, T, you think they're having fun? <laughs> 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. And this, uh, that was uh, uh, right, uh, Naquan Wright. The extra point makes it 35-31. 18 seconds to go in the third quarter. Alabama leading Florida by four. All right, hang on, y'all. Hey, this this, could, good boy. this, uh, this could I have be been interesting. praying for this chaos scenario. I hope it comes to pass. All right, game balls the next Eagle ninety eight point one game day. I've been doing business with Luba for twenty five years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals. But many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Are you a licensed contractor? There's lots of good contractors in Louisiana doing work the right way, but unfortunately, too many unlicensed contractors are working outside the licensing requirements. Working as a contractor in Louisiana requires a license for the company doing the work. The Louisiana State Licensing Board for Contractors wants to help you get licensed to allow you to conduct work legally. It's not difficult to get the license. We can help you. Go to lacontractor.org for more information. Licensed contractors, it's the law. I can't tell you how many people tried to discourage me when I said, I'm opening up a haunted house. If you love doing something, don't let anything or anyone stand in your way. How he comes up with this stuff in his head and designs it is mind-boggling. Debbie and Home Bank understand my business and understand that it's not uh, normal. They've worked with me since the beginning to help my business grow. To all of our heroes working on the front lines of this COVID-19 pandemic, your bravery and selflessness represent the very best of us, and we want to say thank you. I'm asking everyone around the state to join me in celebrating the heroism of our healthcare professionals on the 19th of every month at 1900 hours, that's 7 p.m. Write a note of appreciation, make plans to donate to charitable organizations, or say a prayer. To learn more, visit 19thanks.org. Thank you, and God bless. This isn't just another day, it's so much more. Kelly's life was put on hold when her auctioner primary care doctor discovered a rare blood disorder. Her doctor connected her to an auctioner care team of cancer, heart, and kidney specialists. With multiple primary care locations around Baton Rouge, same-day appointments, and online scheduling, we're relentless about keeping you healthy. Auctioner Baton Rouge, innovating healthcare for Kelly. Gulf Coast Office Products is a nationally recognized Savin office equipment dealer based right here in Louisiana. Over 100 employees strong, Gulf Coast has the boots on the ground to support all vertical markets from education, engineering, legal, and finance with the latest in office technology. From desktop to production segment units, Gulf Coast and Savin have the perfect fit for you. Call 225-756-2644. That's 756-2644 for Gulf Coast Office Products. 
Gulf Coast Bank & Trust is a local bank with a straightforward philosophy. It's about doing the right thing for our customers. Participating in our community with annual local fundraisers. Offering individual attention in a modern banking atmosphere with a trusted local company. Gulf Coast Bank invested in technology with a local touch, giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime. We're building relationships through personal service as the bank that cares about you. Gulf Coast Bank & Trust, the bank that cares about you. If I built a van, Eagle 98.1. Eagle 98.1 Game Day. Game Ball. Game Balls. Game Balls. Game Balls. Presented by Snap Fitness. Snap Fitness. Get fitter faster at snapfitness.com. I hate these chairs. Anyway. Well, I, I have <laughs> probably apologized for what the fan cave may have done to these chairs because yeah, it's gotten real. You get rowdy. wild today. It's gotten it had real to get wild today. Real rowdy had to today. Oh, had to. dude, oh, we were getting rowdy, bro. Y'all right. came. The your energy. reaction made me really jealous that I wasn't here. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, it yeah, was yeah. so much fun. <laughs> no, these last two weeks we are greased. Remember that, people. <laughs> <laughs> you want to give out some game balls? I want to give out one game ball. You want to give out? <laughs> yeah. Let me guess. Yeah, who do you think I'm going to give out my single game ball to? I'm thinking Kayshawn Boutte. Yeah, I'm going to say the cat who went over three bills, three bitches, mm. 300 yards receiving, 22 yards a catch. And how many catches did he have? Like 14? 14. 14. 14 and 22 per, dude. And, and, and I will never forget this. Uh, when else she was down late and they had the ball around the 50-yard line or whatever, just kind of like half joking, we're talking, and when we saw, you know, Boutte's at 250, and we were joking, we're like, he needs a 300, he wants a 300, he's going for three bills, and then sure enough, he went, he did it, dude, and he scored the touchdown, yeah. spinning out of that tackle. I mean, his rise since Terrace Marshall has left, and he knew he had to, like he had to step up, it has been wild to watch, especially while you consider it's a freshman quarterback throwing to him. Everybody knows who he's throwing the ball to. Uh, so, yeah, Kayshawn Booty, you get my, you get all of my balls tonight. I, I, want, I want to pour one out for Josh Reed. The record lasts to 20 years. Yep. The famous 20 catch for 293-yard game against Bama with Rohan. Uh, I just want to say what a, what a run that was. I mean, that's one of the all-time iconic it, it, games. I'll never forget. It, it's an all-timer. And what's crazy is even then it took 20 catches, 14 to get to yeah. 3 Hundred plus. I've never seen anything like. It. Hey, what's a better combo, uh, Brad Johnson to Keyshawn or Max Johnson to Keyshawn? <laughs> Max Johnson to Keyshawn. <laughs> Probably the Max Johnson to Booty connection. Oh, <laughs> I, mean, I would say that. That's probably like the answer there. Finishes the season with forty-five catches, seven hundred thirty-five yards, wow. and five touchdowns in a Wait, How many total yards? Seven thirty-five. Wow. When you get three hundred a game, it goes up in a hurry. Wow. Well, <laughs> if, if you go just <laughs> get game by game, all right, before uh, before the, the A&M game, up till that point, he had not had more than five catches for 49 yards in any individual yeah. game. These are the last three. Eight for a buck 11 against Alabama, five for a buck 08 and a touchdown against Florida, and then today. Wow. As this a is, true freshman. This is, this is the epitome of finishing strong. I, Immediately, I would... and like when the senior, this is not the Eric Molds is covering for peerless price. This is not like the one receiver taking all of the juice and the two receiver having success. This is him stepping into the one role and completely dominating. I'm going to give my uh, offensive game ball to Max Johnson. It, 27 of 51, 435 yards, three touchdowns, one pick. He also ran for another 45 yards and two touchdowns. Here's the thing. We got us a horse race in the spring, if there is spring football, yes. for the starting quarterback job. Uh, they've all done good things. They've all done bad things. Yep. Johnson's going to have the last impression, but it doesn't mean that he got – I would have told you three weeks ago that Miles Brennan would go into spring with a hold on the starting quarterback's job with the other two having to do something a little bit more to get it. I don't feel that way anymore. I think, we, I think we got an open competition here uh, with all three of them starting from basically the same spot, man. And then there's the Nussmeyer wild card, who I don't want to like put pressure on a freshman, and more likely than not, he just ends up being a freshman, and he doesn't maybe factor in. But like when you talk to that kid, he is one of the wildest, most mature interviews that I've mm -hmm. ever done in my life, and he seems to like – 
be so li- – he just has a little bit of that it factor just like kind of through the telephone. So exactly, LSU fans. The bottom line is that you should be happy with whoever wins the job. You know they will be good because nowadays you have talent top to bottom in that room. Okay, so in my defensive game ball goes to Jay Ward. Two interceptions, right, including the pick six, but six total tackles besides that from a corner that – I don't know if he knew he was starting when he went out there for pregame today, yeah. but he he was, and uh, I thought, listen, he got he got deked on the bootleg. All right, so did the referee, so did a lot of other yeah, people. Uh, believe me, if the new defensive coordinator does nothing other than if there is a new defensive coordinator does nothing <laughs> other than set the edge and hold contain, then th- there'll be some improvement <laughs> there. But so he bit on that, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna beat him up too bad for that because he made big plays. Tonight. Yeah, and how about, how about Jay Ward? Okay, so two things. First off, middle toughness. He gives up the first touchdown, then he comes back and scores a touchdown of his own. But then how about Jay Ward's ability to make game-winning plays throughout the year, right? The TFL and a field goal block against Arkansas. Arkansas, sure. The massive pick last week against Florida where he has the wherewithal to avoid the sideline and get that off the tip. Now he has a pick six in this game along with another pick. Like, Jay Ward, um, it, it, it's not been all smooth domination but it's definitely been way more good than bad, and it's especially impressive because it's really situational good. He is making game-winning, game-altering type of plays. What does Jay? What does Jay Ward have? Got Moxie. Com- yeah. Oh, okay. Competitive nature. Yeah. Character. Yeah. 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 All of those things. There you go. Mincy, Playboy Morty. Oh, man, man. great we, to be here. We're so happy uh, for you guys, uh, every one of us here at the Guarantee family, that for the success that you're having. It's been great to see you guys over the last couple of days. I know you've got some plans for over the holidays and Saints stuff. Chiefs tomorrow. Saints we're Chiefs. doing no yeah. 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 yeah, we're doing a big oh. bucket Bre- 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 list. Bre- breeze in, Thomas out. Mike, uh, wait, Breeze out? Bre- Bre- breeze in, Thomas out. But getting to see Drew one last time in the Superdome against Patrick Mahomes, I mean, this is bucket list game for me tomorrow. I it's going to be incredible. Yeah, I mean, no uh, doubt. How, how are we feeling about no Mike Thompson? Back he's back. They said playoffs. They, they said he's still okay for the playoffs. Okay. They said that's what I've okay. read. Okay. Sla- okay. Slant boy. You find, find somebody to guard Tyree Kill. That's what they call him. T Bob just wants to kill I mean, Marty. The, uh, T Bob just gave Marty a look. That was. I that was a great game. Before I said that, I did forget how much of a Mike Thomas guy you are. You, be, you, better, you better not drop that like on the last segment because he's got oh, no way to go. T Bob's about to slap Marty. It's just, I mean. There's nothing wrong with doing anything <laughs> better than any human being on the planet. Yeah. And so if that is running slants and being the biggest beast over the field, in the middle of the field on the planet, I will take that on my team <laughs> 10 out of 10 I'll, times. Are you, you, you guys, Who cheer you, for the you, Cardinals, you, Marty? Who do you cheer for? The Cardinals need a receiver for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen, you, you guys argue about this amongst yourself. As of 30 <laughs> seconds ago, I was on vacation, so now I'm here voluntarily. <laughs> Thanks to uh, Matt Musso for doing such a great job on the board. For Joe Rod on the video board, Mincy, Playboy Morty, uh, have a great holiday. Thanks uh, for stepping in tonight and have safe travels back to New York when you go. For T Bob Aber, I'm Charles Henniger saying thank you and good evening. Tigers win 53 48. That puts a wrap on the 2020 season. This is Eagle 98.1 Game Day. When morning came to Louisiana, we were hopeful, not hibernating. We were mending fences, feeding neighbors, and holding our kids. When morning came to Louisiana, we were wide awake, planting seeds for next year's crops. We were stronger, ready for what's next. And together, as we build anew, Blue Cross stands ready to support you. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy.